you talk about um, cage management Mm -hmm. and you talk about putting the ball in the back of the cage. Talk to me a little bit about that philosophy and and what that means. What that means is, again, just as you just said, there's a purpose to the cage. Uh, Oftentimes, uh, you'll see kids walk into the cage and and they just swing. They Mm -hmm. go in there to swing. There's no plan as to what they're going to do today. Mm -hmm. And as we talk about how to practice, okay, there's a way to practice. There's a way to prepare. And that gives you the discipline. There's also on that practice is the discipline. And the discipline is to put the ball in the back of the net. What I like to do is give the kids, okay, listen, nobody wants to be told what to do all the time. Mm -hmm. And for me, I tell the kids, if you can get this ball off the tee, to the back of the net, your swing's fine. That's too simple. Hmm. But don't I have to drop my shoulder, drop my knee, put my hands in this thing? No, I'm telling you, if you can put this ball to the back of the net, you're fine. And then I sit there and I watch it, and it's just a great evolution on how this player becomes himself. Right, and he right. takes responsibility. They're adapting themselves to right. try to hit to the back. Because everybody swings different. Everybody's body's different. Everybody has a different physical ability. They Some have longer arms, shorter arms. Mm-hmm. Who's got the uh, lower center of gravity. These are things you look at as a coach. And this is why guys hit in certain part of the lineups mm-hmm. than others. And this is why guys strike out because they're long, they're short. And there's a lot of different reasons. But if the purpose and uh, the discipline is to get the ball in the back of the net, you don't have to coach them. And they coach themselves. And the best thing in the world, as we know as adults, is when you do something by yourself. When the accomplishment was made and you did it by yourself. Well, as a coach, that's our goal. Right. Is to make them think that they did it by themselves. Right. Mm. In that, we'll tell we we go, we teach them, I teach them what a batted ball tells you. A foul ball. Learn right then. The foul ball goes this way. You did this. Mm. You probably did this. If the ball goes that way, you probably did this. Okay, so you have to self, you know, you say self-correct. Now, mm-hmm. the like a baseball quote when you think of like, you know, Yogi Berra is you can't think and hit at the same time, right? What's your take on that? Uh, I think it's cute. <laughs> it worked. So, no, you know, I, I think let's, it's okay. Let's, let's dive into um, that, though. And I think, you know, Yogi Berra, you know, he is right, but you got to think. You got to think. Mm-hmm. What are you thinking about? You're thinking about where this ball's coming off that plane, not the the ball the the the, uh, the linear plane does it leave that elevation? Mm-hmm. Uh, did, did he did I see his hand turn? Uh, did I see him leg kick? Did it go higher? <clears throat> Excuse me. Did it go higher than normal? Did it stay lower than normal? Mm-hmm. Because there are certain pitches that cannot be thrown physically mm-hmm. without that change. Without the change in your foot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So if I'm and if, no, I'm sure the great pitchers can do this. But if a kid leg kicks. Okay, high in the stretch, mm-hmm. he has a good chance of throwing a curveball because that's what they do. Kids, they, they try to help themselves and they try to get on top of the ball. Right, really get up and over it. Right, the guy slide steps, it's a sinker slider. Mm-hmm. So I know I have to do is decide uh, am I going left, am I going right here, where am I at? Okay, so yes, you do have to think and hit. I think, I mean, uh, I get what Yogi was saying. Well, it, it's, it's, there's so much information that goes into this. I uh-huh. mean, uh, right now, what I, what I do now with this. Um, with the visual tee, the batting tee, is we do um, weekday games mm-hmm. or weekend pitchers. We do the Friday night pitcher or we'll do the weekday, the non-conference pitcher. Because now we're teaching these college hitters you know, how to get their body speed ready for a midweek game. Mm-hmm. Because a midweek game, probably they're going to throw the freshman, the sophomore to get innings in. They're not going to throw the good ones because they want to win the conference games. Right. So we got the Friday night guy where we look at something different. Okay, then the midweek guy or the body speeds on get slower because the fastball now becomes relative. Hmm. I have to get ready for uh, a 98 mile an hour fastball on Friday night or an 85 mile an hour midweek fastball. But hmm. the fastball is a fastball, but hmm. you've got to get ready for a different fastball. And that the kids, when you start talking to kids, like, I never thought about that. Well, you know, the midweek guy is the guy, you, that's the layup. Okay, that, that you got to take care of the midweek guy. You know, that's just that's where you get your three hits, your four hits. That those two games you play during the week, then the weekend you take your lumps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's how guys get drafted all the time. It's hysterical. We get guys coming from the draft, and major colleges, major every many major college you can think about. These kids come in and go, "Oh my God, I can't believe I'm hitting two ten." Hey, Mick, I'm, uh, how, how am I hitting two ten? I hit two ten, dude. You hit two ten all year. In college. Mm-hmm. No, I never hit two ten in college. Yes, you did. I said, here's what you did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I said, you hit 340 during a week. 
Okay, then a weekend came, he had a buck 80. 